is that that is his desire. That was always his desire. That's why he, when he redeemed us, see, the Bible says in, in Isaiah chapter 59 that our sins separate us from God. And that's a part of the reason why God wanted to take away that division so he could so he could mend the relationship and be able to commune with us again because sin separates us from God. Even in the old in the Old Testament when the priests would offer sacrifices, the they were not if if the priests had not cleaned themselves a certain way, if they had not prepared themselves a certain way, they would they what they always tied bells on them and when they went into the holies of holies some of them would die because of sin. Even though they try to make atonement for themselves, they try to do certain things, I'm just trying to show you sin separates us from God. God is a holy God. He cannot be in the presence of sin. He cannot be in the presence. But, but, but praise God that through Jesus Christ, our righteousness is of Christ. When we, when we become when, when we become saved and we and, and we confess Jesus with our heart, we confess Jesus with our mouth, we believe in our heart, we become saved, our righteousness is of him. And if you really want to know, the reason that Jesus was beat so bad and he was maimed and he was mutilated, and he was uh, they did him the way they were doing him because they were taking out the wrath of sin on his body. That's why the Bible says that he was chastised for our peace. He was bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. That's why I said that. He took the wrath of sin in his body that we could be healed. Because sin, we know the Bible said the wages of sin is what? Death, right? And Satan's goal was to bring sin and death and destruction into humanity. But let me back up. So when God made man, he communed with him, he walked with him in the garden. Right? Then we fast forward to chapter 3 in Genesis. We know, this, we know the, the classic story where uh, Satan tempted, tempted Eve. Adam was there with him. He bit, they, they partook of the fruit and then the downfall of man happened. Right? In, in uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, it says, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Now, notice, or take note, God never asked Adam where was he at. He never asked Adam where was he at, but what happened? The disobedience and the sin, him partaking of the fruit, now hid him from God. It changed his identity. It changed his DNA. It changed his makeup. It, the Bible said that God made us in his image and his likeness. God is God has no sin. God has no sickness. He had, he had none of that. Right? In verse 9 says, or verse 10 it says, so he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Again, we were never afraid. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit said, when we are right standing with God, we're, we're not afraid. That's why the Bible says the righteous are as bold as the mind. When, when we're in right standing with God, we're never afraid. What do I have to be afraid of? God is coming to you. God is with you. But let me explain. I want to explain something. Because I, today, again, I want to talk about culture. And I want to talk about how the world affects us as believers and as people in general. So, when sin happened, when Adam partook of the fruit, now all of a sudden, he's knowledgeable of sin. He's knowledgeable of, I can choose to do wrong. I can go against God's will. Right? And, and a darkness and a sin, sin cursed the earth. Darkness cursed the earth. That's why the Bible said 
that Satan is the prince of the air to this day. When you look at the, disrupt, the, the, the destructive nature of, of, of human beings and the earth and everything that's going on, that's why. Because Adam, God gave Adam dominion. Adam did get, when he transgressed against God, he gave dominion over to Satan. And so now the world is cursed. Right? But I, but I do want to, I want to pinpoint something. I want to make sure I say something. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna talk about it a little later. When it when, when when the Bible says we're 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 in the world, uh, but we're not of the world, right? Being worldly or being of the world is not always it's not always uh, something. It's it's not always something that you do. It's a it's a it's a state of your heart, right? Being of the world is a state of your heart. This is why, and, and let me back up a little bit again, and I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all why I wanted to talk about this, because uh, evangelists were listening to me. We was out, we was evangelizing, and this lady started explaining, um, just talking about her view of God, and her, her view of Jesus, God, and it, and it was so off. It was it, it was extremely off, you know. And, and no judgment to her, you know, but it was off. So we're we're talking about it and talking about it and and, and trying to reason with it, if you will. <laughs> and this is but this is why I'm trying this is why I'm trying to explain what happened with the downfall of man. Because how you know, brother? Because we have to realize, instead of us having a natural that baby's so beautiful, look at it, y'all. Hey, sister. Instead of us having a natural inclination to do the will of God, right, and to be like God, we now have a natural inclination to be like I'm going to say a bad word, but nobody want to hear, right? Satan, <laughs> huh? If you want me to keep it all the way real. Because he became the prince of the air. He became the dominating force in the earth. That's why Jesus told when, when the Pharisees said, well, we, we, uh, we like our father Abraham. Jesus said, no, no, no. Huh? I know you ain't. <laughs> I'm putting my own word. Right. But Jesus said, no, you are your father, the devil. And so in the world they have a saying, we are children of God. No, no, no. Now again, give me time to, to, to explain this properly because I don't want to sound judgmental or like I'm trying to be think that, that we should think we better about that's not the case. I just want to explain it properly. Because when when we are like the father, we have to do as the father does. But when sin happened, it was it became our natural inclination to do wrong. To, to, to walk in our own ways, to walk in our own pride, to think it's about us. Thank God that he is such a merciful and a loving God that he provided a way of escape. You know, we all know well, we all know the story of Satan. We 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 are God's glory. Humanity is God's glory. And Satan was so mad, he said, Well, I, I gotta find a way to destroy these though. And then God sent Jesus. Uh, he came, God came in the flesh to redeem us. But what we have to understand is we have to be redeemed. If we are, if we are not redeemed, if we are not, if, if we don't, that, that, that's why the Bible said that Jesus reversed the curse, right? Now, you can look, you know, it's, of course I have, you know, I'm pretty sure we all have, I have plenty of conversations with people of all kind of, you know, ethnicity, beliefs, whatever, right? 
And some people say they don't believe in God, they don't believe in Jesus, they don't believe in Christianity, whatever. And one of the things I used to tell them, I said, man, look at this world. Do you agree? Don't you agree that it's messed up? Would you, well, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but personally, I wouldn't even want to just, I wouldn't want to be here for that. Some people say, well, why do we got to die? Which we don't, but I wouldn't want to be here. I wouldn't want to be here for that. This, man, it's, it's, wild. it's wild now, here, buddy. Say that, this thing ain't tore up. So I'm saying all this to say. This is how the world affects us. Having a worldly vision. And it's, it's, it's not to anyone's, it's not to our own fault. It's not like before you can accept Jesus Christ, I should come to you or anybody should come to you and be like, oh, you're such a bad person, you sinner, da 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 we, we all was lost in sin. We, we all didn't know any better. Right? I want to show you something. Turn with me to 1 John 2 and 16. Hey guys. Turn with me to 1 John 2 and 16. I want to I want to further illustrate again. And again, this is the world series. I want to talk about how the world affects us and it affects everybody. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Every sin and every problem that the world has pretty much comes down to be to this scripture. Even when you see the original downfall of, of humanity, it comes from this scripture. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, y'all say lust of the flesh? The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So every sin that is committed, everything that we do that is wrong, it, it falls under these three things. When Satan came to Eve, he said, if you eat of this fruit, you're going to become wiser. It said when Eve looked at the fruit, she looked. Huh? Lust of the eyes. You will become wise. The pride of life. Everything we do, and guess what? We naturally do it. Without the help of Jesus, this is what we will do. That's why I said, for all that is in the world, this is what we will do. Now, mind you, John was writing this to the church. Now, if I have time, because I already told y'all, this probably going to be a two-part. If I have time, we're going to talk about what it is to be a common Christian. And we're going to talk about the flesh, too. But I just want to show you guys this. This is what will naturally happen. It's already said. That's why David said, I was born in sin. I was clothed in iniquity. I was born in sin. You, you don't have a choice. So, and, and, and I'll say this too, that's why we have to make sure that we're not judgmental. Apostle Paul said that I don't, he, Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 5, the end, of, at the end of the chapter, he said, I don't judge the world. He said, I don't judge uh, outside the body, I judge inside the body. He said, I did not write to you and tell you not to keep company with, with fornicators, extortioners, adulterers in the world because then you wouldn't be able to be around nobody. That's what he said, right? So we have to make sure we still articulate this the right way because our mission is to win the loss. Our mission is to appeal to those. Jesus said to heal on me for this. So we should never think that we better than somebody else. Oh, 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 I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to, want to talk to y'all. Man, you ain't. <laughs> that, that's right, baby. <laughs> so, again, that's all that's in the world. That's where everything comes from. And so, 
But I do want to say this too, I want because I told you I want to talk about culture. There are a lot of cultures. There are a lot of subcultures. There are the American culture. There's the hip hop culture. There's the the skateboard culture. There's the I mean, it's it's so many cultures you couldn't even name, right? But this is what people don't realize. There's a church culture, right? Country culture, the southern culture, the northern culture, the blah, blah, we go on forever, right? But this is what people don't realize. Jesus established culture. That's right. He established culture. Jesus established the kingdom. And that's supposed to be the same thing that we're establishing. Not anything else, like I'm cool, I grew up rapping, hip hop, whatever, but there would be no other culture in my life exalted except the kingdom of God. I grew up in the hood, east side, north side, but there would be no other culture established except the kingdom of God. And what happens is these cultures compete. These, these ideologies we have in our mind, these cultures, they compete with us. That's why the Bible said, that's why the Bible said to cast down every thought and every imagination that exalts, exalts itself against God. Right? And so we have to be very careful because remember what I said, we have a natural inclination to go the other way. I remember one time I was walking out and praying. And I was believing God, so every morning I would get up and pray and just thank God it was doing da da da. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Uh, and but my mind would come against it. And to the point where I was like, Lord, what is the problem? Like, I don't understand why my mind is trying to fight me about having faith with you in this area. And the Lord told me, well, he said, that's your karma mind. So if y'all remember, uh, in Galatians chapter 5, it says that you have the flesh and the spirit, and they war against each other, right? So we have to be very careful that we don't allow the world and worldly cultures or any culture to invade how we think, to invade what Christ taught us. Watch this. The Holy Spirit hit me with this on the way over here. <laughs> I'm smiling because I, I do think it's deep. I ain't even said nothing in my life. <laughs> so, Scripture is a kingdom ordinance. Huh? Scripture is kingdom ordinance. Y'all know what an ordinance is? When police pull you over and your, your seatbelt not buckled, they pass the ordinance. Ordinances are laws. So according to the state of Georgia, the ordinance that they pass, if you break the law, you can be fined or imprisoned, or you won't go to jail, you won't pay a fine, you won't do something. Y'all got me? But scripture is kingdom ordinance. So we can't say we kingdom enforcers, we kingdom this, we kingdom that. I'm Jesus this, I'm Jesus that, but we don't live by scripture. Because the, the ordinance has been given. But what will happen is the things of the world and the way people think. It's a, it's a page on uh, Instagram called Millionaire or something. Like all they talk about is how to be me and they give you information, this, this, and that, blah, blah, blah. and guess what? That's another culture. Because a culture is an established belief. It's a, it's a, it's a way of living. It's a formula that I'm, I'm going to live this way. I'm going to abide by this. This is what. This is how I live. But again, Jesus established culture. I don't understand. I, I don't really understand sometimes how. Certain things can happen when we're supposed to be disciples of Christ. I, I, don't, I don't understand. What, 
what, what, what room for racism is there when we decide to cry? What room for greed is there? What room, where, what, what room for all of this stuff if we're supposed to be deciding to cry? Strictly adhering to the word of God. But we have to, again, we have to be careful that we make sure that we are living line upon line, precept upon precept. Well, what does the word say about it? How does the word say I should be in my marriage? It's cultures and marriage. It's cultures where how people in America treat women. It's cultures where how people in India treat women. But what's the culture that Jesus established of how we should treat women? Or how I should treat my wife? Love your wife as Christ loved what? That's culture. I want to go to, even though I'm not going to dive too deep into this, I still want to uh, go real quick to 1 Timothy. First Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 10. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. It says, for the love of money. Somebody say love of money. Oh, is the root of all kinds of evil. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The love of money is the root, not the fruit. Not the fruit. The fruit is committing crimes, cheating people, getting over on people, being shysty, going to prison, killing people. All, all, all. That's, the, that's the root. That's the fruit, excuse me. But the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It's part of the world, right? But let me not forget to say this. It's the love of money. Not money. Mm. That's when we get twisted sometimes. Oh, well, the Bible says money is the root. No, the Bible says money is the root of all evil. Because the same money that, that causes people to do evil is the same money that is used to advance the gospel. Money is a resource. It's the love of money. It's the love. See, what happens is, again, the things of the world will permeate us. Have you guys ever thought about how people kind of, y'all probably, some of y'all probably seen me put on my page. Y'all ever thought about how people just naturally, like, got a problem with God? Like, naturally think if you say something about Jesus or you, you weird, they just naturally, just not, it's just natural. Why you gotta keep talking about Jesus? Well, you know, you might sit down and bless the food, but don't keep talking about the Lord now. <laughs> oh, you a weirdo now, buddy. Why you gotta be a weirdo, though, bro? She thinks you. I knew you would help me. So, the Bible says that Enoch walked so closely with God that he did not even see death. Then, we, then when we turn to Hebrews chapter 11 and we see all the, the examples of faith, the examples of faith, the examples of faith, it was because these people walked with God. It was because they heard from God. But the more you hear from God, the more you invite God, people think you're weird. The more scripture you quote, the more crazy people will look at you. Why though? 
sin. Be a murderer. That was no way to go. I was like that too before. I was like that young. When I was young. You know, I can't, you know, I ain't go too far in that, but I get it. Right? You know, I used to say, when I was young, the Satan used to tell me, like, man, you ain't even experienced enough of the world. I, you don't get saved, you ain't experienced nothing. Yes. And then, hey, I'm gonna tell you what's so funny. It'd be the smallest way he will deceive you. One time I was on my way to the mall, and I was used to going to the mall a certain way. And uh, I was going to North Carolina before it turned into a, like walking dead. But <laughs> <laughs> my partner told me, he said, I said, yeah, I'm gonna get off and go this way, da da da. He was like, no, you ain't gotta do that. All you gotta do is go take a right and go straight. That, you can go down quicker that way. And I was like, what? And so at the time, I'm, I mean, he don't know, but at the time, I'm, I've been going back and forth about, I think at the time I was, I had, I had gotten saved, but I, I, the same was trying to pull me back, you know what I'm saying? And I did end up backsliding, backsliding at that time, but, um, Satan told me, he said, see man, you don't even go all the way to the mall, you talking about it? <laughs> yeah, real talk. He was like, see, man, I told you you don't know you ain't spending nothing, you don't even go all the way to the mall. Get what I did with my stupid self. Hey, you right. <laughs> Let me wait, let me wait this. <laughs> that, well, I ain't go that far with the conversation, but still, that was behind that lot. Well, maybe I should wait and know all the way to the mall. <laughs> 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 But see, that's why we have to stay rooted in the Word. And see, what happens is, this we got to understand, guys, like, the only difference, I always tell people, the only difference between me now and the old me is the Word. Jesus said, by, uh, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that you see out the mouth of God. So, we have to feed ourselves the word. We have to be in fellowship. We have to pray. We have to, we have to do things that will help our relationship with God, that will make us closer to God. If we don't, we will naturally go back to sin. We will. Because again, we're in this flesh. We're in this flesh. That's why Apostle Paul said, I, 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 I beat my flesh into submission. That's what he said. He said, I beat my flesh into submission. What does that mean? I'm constantly beating this flesh, reading, fasting, praying, casting down thoughts. So, we were in the natural state with God, when God created us, it was our natural state. We had no sin. We were just like him. He walked, he communed with us. He, he, he was, there was no flaw in us because we were just like him. And then sin came because of the fall, because of disobedience. And then now we became naturally against God. I'm going to show you a scripture because I don't want y'all to think I'm just talking. Turn with me to Romans, please, chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're going to read verse 4 through 8. Now you're going to see a word, carnal. A uh, carnal basically means fleshly. Romans chapter 8, verse 4. It says uh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. Y'all see that? Those that live according to the flesh 
set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes we live in according to the flesh and don't even know it. And, then, and see, this is why I said when I was saying certain things, I'm not saying it to sound judgmental or make, you know, us think we better than somebody. That, that's not the point. But there are a lot of people, and I was one of them. I didn't know any better. Like, it was the time. I, I didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up to be religious. I didn't grow up. I mean, my mama taught me to say the model prayer, you know, uh, our father who I'm, who I'm having, but we didn't grow, we didn't grow up like that. You know what I'm saying? So, and if somebody asks me, like, do you believe in God? I'd be like, yeah, I believe in God. But honestly, before I was 20, about 20 years old, I really didn't know that I was supposed to live a certain way. Like, honestly, I, I did. I remember when I first started going to church, boy, they turned such and such. Let me turn to the index first. <laughs> well, by the, time, by the time I get the mushroom, they be gone to another, you know what I'm saying? But that's cool, it don't matter. That, everybody go through that, you know what I'm saying? But my point is, we, we, sometimes people don't know, we don't know. And, and guess what, God, that's when we come in. It's our job to tell them, to help them. That's when we come in at. But it says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. How do we know it's of the flesh? Anybody, how do we know when we say, how do we know it's of the flesh? His word. But again, that's why we have to be in the word. Verse 6, watch this. This is the scripture I want to show y'all. Verse 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Now watch this. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if we live in our flesh, we can't please God. We can't. And that don't matter if you, if, 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 you ain't got saved yet, just got saved, been saved 20 years. People been saved through stuff in the flesh. And you cannot please God. You're being carnal. But guess what? We are naturally carnal. And so people in the world, they do they doing all this carnal stuff, and the world teaches us to be extremely carnal. Extremely calm. Like, be calm as you can. <laughs> In the book of Genesis, them folk told the angels, when the angels came to the door to warn uh, uh, Abraham, they told them folk, we want to know you calmly. Hmm. What? They told angels, we want to know you calm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Listen, this, this is something I used to always say, you know, um, dealing with a lot of people. Some of y'all know my testimony, done time in prison, you know, been around a whole bunch of stuff. But I used to always, what, but what used to kind of trip me out is that sometimes we don't even realize like where our help come from comes from and where our hurt comes from. And I think that's so simple. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't even take time. If you've been smoking for all these years and doing all this stuff, you keep coming back to prison like if these same group of friends that doing the same thing Put that same stuff back in your hand, you can't. But again, culture. People say sometimes, like, 
be weary of the same places, the same people. You know, for me, I didn't have to really, I didn't really have to leave those. Well, I can't say that. I did have to leave the city because I was gone for 10 years. And that time allowed me to develop a character and a way of thinking and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to say that. But certain places and certain people, they will put your life to, to, to destroy you. Certain people, that's what their purpose was, if you think about it. Sometimes we try to be so spiritual in the wrong way. <laughs> but this is my partner. We've been down since elementary. Okay, your same partner that shows you how to do that. That partner ain't the same partner that's still how he was and still trying to get you to do it. You talking about that partner? But again, culture. There should be nothing that we're willing to do that's not in the word. That's out, that, that we know that the Lord is not, that's not his will. And, and, and I'm going to say this too. There, there are a lot of people, be, because we don't realize this, if you, if you don't spend time in the Word of God, if you don't be, come to church, be in fellowship, you know, some people say, well, I don't have to go to church. Well, you don't. You don't think so? Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you this. The church is not necessary to build. The church is a body of believers. So, when it, so, so if you really want to know what the church is, the church is the living, the living organism of Christ. Huh? The Bible says, how can he preach unless he's sick? When Jesus asked Peter, he said, he, he said who do men say that I am? And Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood, blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, right? Watch this. Make sure you get this now. So the other disciples, Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven did. The Bible is understood through revelation, not education. Revelation comes from the Father. He picks who he gives the revelation. And yeah, there are preachers and people who have done wrong, but there are people he's handpicked to build us up. And these are the same people that Satan trying to tell us, oh, don't go around them. The church. And again, the church may not necessarily be the building, but there are people that he handpicked to build us up. So we have to be careful, but see, that's going back to that worldly thinking. I can't tell you how many times I heard preachers, pastors say they have a great, they have a great comment. I remember one time the pastor was talking about he was on the plane. They had been on the plane for hours. And um, having a great conversation with the person he was sitting next to. And then they, they asked, he asked him, Who, what you do for a living? He told he told that man he was a pastor. It was over with. He ain't even gonna talk to him. So why? I mean, I'm not, I never tell you, I never say that, that some pastors ain't done wrong. Of course they have. But everybody, some of everybody has done wrong. Doctors, lawyers, uh, car salesmen, you name it. People work at Walmart, I mean, you name it. Plumbers, mechanics, everybody done hurt you. Everybody done done wrong to you. <laughs> but it's just the church folk that you don't ever come near me again in your life. But that goes back to the world of thinking. I, I had people do me wrong, of course. I had people handle me wrong in church, but it, it ain't going to affect what I, how I view the Lord and the fact that I know the Lord says that the, the church, the body, you guys, we, we, I'm, I'm going to be a part of a body somewhere. I had a leader do me wrong, but I had a bishop over me too. He's been great. So it's just, we have to be careful. So all of this stuff 
is worldly, worldly, world, how the world thinks. And it's a culture. One thing tripped me out the other day. What's the date? 27? 24. Um, 420. Some of y'all know what that is. Some of y'all. Some of y'all that real green, y'all know what that is. <laughs> know somebody who may not know what it is, but I ain't gonna say it. But, uh, <laughs> 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 anyway, so for, I'm gonna tell y'all what 420 is, y'all know. It's a day where they, it, I guess it's, what is it? Yeah, it's a holiday. It's an unwritten holiday, though. It's not like a national holiday, yeah. but it's, it's, it's a day where they celebrate the, the left-handed cigarette. It's a cultural holiday. It's a cultural holiday. The left hand seat, see? <laughs> Wait. Later on, later on. Later on. I'm, in the spirit. I'm in the spirit right now. I got, I got time to deal with you. But uh, anyway, they were saying, I was, like, I, I, I like YouTube. So I was on YouTube. And they said, they were saying they was doing a documentary on Wiz Khalifa, a whole documentary, a whole following this man around and everything, just because of how many left-hand cigarettes he smoked. Hmm. Only reason. And they, and they said, we want to celebrate him and Snoop Dogg today because they smoke. <laughs> really, bro? Hmm. Like, celebrate. Now, I guarantee you, these same people that be walking up like, hey, can I tell you about what Jesus did in my life? Oh, Lord, oh my God. Can I tell you, can I share the scripture with you? And again, I'm not saying this to be judgmental, I'm just, but I'm pointing out something here. Even, even if, okay, even if you caught up in some type of lifestyle, why do you have hatred toward the Bible? Why do you have hatred toward scripture? I ain't telling you nothing's gonna hurt you. But it's because the world, the world, the worldly ways have infiltrated. It's infiltrated. And some of these people, I don't know, listen, it ain't for me to say if you love God or not, you know God, but the problem is, let me go to another scripture. Mark chapter 4, verse 24. Let me, let me show y'all what the problem is, because again, I want to I, I want to emphasize culture and information that leads to the way we think. Mark chapter four, verse twenty-four. It says, "Then he said to them, this is Jesus talking, right? He said, take heed what you hear.' Y'all see that? What you hear? Excuse me." With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you, and to you who hear, more will be given. Jesus said, take heed what you hear. So the problem is, what we're hearing is all, you know, one thing about the media, even, bef even before social media, one thing about the media, the media always paints people of God in negative ways. It make them look like weirdos. It make them look like they're powerless. It make them look like always. Even if you go back, I'm not, I'll never forget that movie, The Exorcist, The Exorcist, uh -huh. and that priest came in. Yeah. Even though Catholics are not truly Christian, but we'll talk about that later. But um, The Exorcist came in there, he, he sprinkled them with blood. Yeah. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. 
But that's that's just what. But the reason why is because it's the world. You, you know what I'm saying? Something else I was thinking about. Do y'all know why Jesus? I know y'all remember when y'all heard about the, the story when Jesus cast the legion out of that man, and all the spirits went into the pigs, and they and the pigs ran down into the sea. What did people tell Jesus? We Get out of our time. Y'all know why they said that? Because those pigs were raised to be sacrifices to a god of, of that area, to a pagan god. That's right. That's right. And, the, and those pigs also were being raised for money. You know why they told the apostles? They ran the apostles out at one time. They came. I, I, I don't. The apostles went into a town where they were worshiping Diana. Diana's, right? And it was a part of the culture. But watch this. Anytime that a culture is really, truly a part of an area, it's going to have something to do with the economics of it. So when that, so, and I'm going to talk about what you said, right? right? So the goddess, when they went to this city and they were worshiping the goddess Diana, guess what? They were, the people were making money from them worshiping the goddess Diana. They were selling stuff to them for them to worship the goddess Diana, right? And so when the apostles came in and changed the culture and it took away their money, guess what they said? Get out of our town. Everything in the world goes back to money. See, people will love us. They'll love Church in the Street when we go and we praying for them. And, oh, yeah, can, can you pray for me that my business do better? Yeah, can you pray for me that my marriage do better? Yeah. Can you pray for me that my son graduate? Yeah. They'll love us then. But go up to an area where the liquor store is making a lot of money and get some folks delivered from alcoholism. Guess what they're going to say? Get out of our city. See, that's what the problem always boils down to, really. That's why even in America, they love Jesus. Jesus this, Jesus that. But when you really enforce the ordinances, scripture, from the kingdom, when, you, when you're a real kingdom enforcer and you really enforce what Jesus taught, guess what they're going to say? You know what, man? <laughs> You're doing too much. Why, why I'm doing too much? Because you want to keep seven million people. Oh, I know why I'm doing too much. Because you got all these Budweiser and Miller, Miller, Miller Genuine Draft Sparsers, and we trying to get people delivered from alcoholism. That's why I'm doing too much. Oh, my bad. Huh? Because you trying to promote the nightclubs and the nightlife and the entertainment when I'm trying to get people to spend time in the presence of God and they ain't going to be entertaining themselves and spending money on your tickets as much, now it's a problem. That's what it all boils down to. All of these cultures are established on an economic basis, really. And really, if you really, I'm trying to, when you really follow Christ, you're going to step outside of their system. You're going to. So once we partook of the fruit, first we were only knowledgeable and only sensitive to God and to the Spirit of God and to what God said. Then we became sensitive to our egos and sin, and, and we're naturally led by a master, and some of us don't even know it's our master, but, but we are. Right? Yes. This might be a little loud, but let's get it back. When you come to God, shoot it that way. That way? Yeah. Ready? Right. So when you come to God, you've been living in sin, 
and then you truly accept Christ in your heart, this is what happens. The same 
See, sir, and, 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 and listen, a lot of things that we're, we do, we, we don't know. And what we have to realize is Satan in the world, want, they want to draw us away from God. You know what happens when a person is in a broken state, right? Sometimes I met people, you you know, it, you know it's a different man when you meet somebody and they get broke. Like you, you they've been through something that really, they really depend on the Lord. When I when I met my wife, we, you know, we friends, I what? It used to just, you can just tell. It's not that the person's gonna be perfect, but you can tell they really want to live. And it's like, well, what you, what, what, what happened? <laughs> like, why? You know what I'm saying? And, and I was thinking about this. It. It's, it's not that, so, and, and, and what happens is people kind of, like for me, I, I went to prison, right? But it wasn't the Lord's will for me to go to prison. It wasn't the Lord's will for me to do stuff I was doing. Some people, you'll hear them say, in the hospital, they, Make God. And so then they'll start saying, well, God put that sickness on them. Then some people, they got what's called foxhole religion because they'll be over in a war and they die in the foxhole and they cry out to God. And, they, and then from there, they start walking. But really, what it is is what happens is there's something that happens in our lives, in our lives, and it jars us so bad that we like, hold up. <laughs> Let me back up from everything. And that's when you can really hear from God. Because what happens is that all that other stuff, it clutter your mind too much. You, you got too much going on. You got too many voices. You got too many friends. You don't know God. You, you doing stuff in the name of God. You, it's too much going on. And that's why you can't really hear me. He would have been spoke to you. You been had a call in your life. I've been had a call in my life. So the thing is, but guess what? Pray to God. We don't have to have that stuff happen to us. We can just say, let me back up. Let me get off social media. Let me turn the TV off. Let me, let me fall back from a friend and my family. Let me hear from God. In America, I mean, of course, everybody knows America is most, you know, We've been the most prosperous place in the world. But I wouldn't think that anybody anywhere else spends as much money on entertainment as America does. I'm talking about billions, buddy. Billions. These apps, man, these apps, and I ain't the one, I ain't the type, you know, some people be mad about I don't, I, it ain't my, I, it ain't him, neither him nor the other me, to me, but that's why these athletes, they make millions of dollars. Throwing the ball, shooting the ball, millions. Why? Because, shoot, we go to the Hall of Fame. Go to the game, you pay $100 for a ticket, $80 for a ticket, $70 for a ticket. Shoot, Prince and all these, and Beyonce and whoever else, these folks paying, Lord knows how much to go to these concerts. Right? But we entertain ourselves so much that we don't spend no time with the Lord. And then you wonder why you can't hear from him. And you wonder why your relationship is no no the Lord. You don't spend no time with him, bro. And thank God for when we go through outreach, when we have fellowship, but guess what? That ain't nothing. We don't give God no more two hours on Sunday. You, how many more hours you gonna live? The, the whole week. Come to church on Easter. Come to church on Christmas. What that's gonna do, man? What that gonna do to you? Huh? What, what that gonna do? I hope that suit was nice because it's hot. We going in. Just be all the way straight up with you. That ain't gonna do nothing for you. Living for the Lord. That's why Apostle Paul said, and, 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 and he said, y'all scare me, y'all that exalt days and months and dollars and dollars. Every day I'm supposed to be living for the Lord. Praise God, we, but we can worship Him any day. Thank God for that. 
We worship God any day, any second. We just really have to question, again, I'm going to go back to what I said, where our help comes from, where our hurt comes from. We all got stuff we can question. I've been on social media too much. Every, everybody got something they need. That's why Apostle Paul said, examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Everybody got something. We, we all need to bring everything into question. You know why? Because the world, Satan wants to distract us. Satan wants us to not live. Man, I'm saying something. Even once you get saved, the devil ain't really tripping on you if you ain't doing nothing. You ain't really doing nothing, bro. Like, he ain't really tripping on you. He worried about somebody that's going to go witness to somebody, somebody that's going to go lay hands on somebody, somebody that's going to go and pray for somebody, somebody that will go in Walmart, somebody that will go to the bro, wherever. And we, because you know what? Jesus said, go ye therefore in the highways and byways. Jesus never said, uh, go invite somebody to church. He never said, tell them to come. He didn't. So the devil don't care. You, okay, you say. <laughs> That's our problem. We want to give God just a little bit. That don't be true me out. I can't even lie. I, I can't even lie. I don't, that, that be true. One thing I say about myself, not that I'm perfect, or I'm the mark or whatever. I said to myself, I said, I am not fixing to be the person that God delivered. God was there for me in the worst situation of my life. Absolute worst. And it should have destroyed me. It really should have. If it weren't for him, it should have destroyed me. I should have been dead. So, he helped me through that, walking through that, everybody on the band. And then when I get back on my feet, I'm supposed to just, oh, appreciate it, I'm gone. Nah, I can't do that, bro. I can't do that. I think that's what too many of us do that. It's like, but again, we're trained to think that way. If you think about it, we're trained to, to, to give God the least that we can. We're so trained to do that, that when we see somebody giving God they all, we say they weak. Why they say on the corner preaching? Is he saying, what, what, is he, did he say anything? Is he saying a word? Why they out here asking people, can they pray for him? Why they bother you? You know what was so crazy in the Bible? And people still do it today, though. When Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath, well, it was time when it wasn't even on the Sabbath. He would heal somebody. Them crazy people would be upset because he healed somebody. <laughs> what? You focus on the fact that he healed somebody? <laughs> you, hold on. You focus on when he did it. Not that a man that was paralyzed for 40 years was healed. That's what you focused on. You see what I'm saying? So we, we really got a question. That's why Jesus said, beware of believing the letter of the Pharisees and of Herod. We really got a question what we be thinking about and what be going on. If, the, if I see the Holy Spirit heal somebody, I'm going to think twice for I, uh, let me go question her, see why she, <laughs> bro, sit down. <laughs> Good as not. But again, we really have to question. We have Guys, we have to make sure. This, this, I said all of that to say. We'll round this off and finish it up for the day and pray about what the next day. Um, saying all this to say, we have two things. Two things I want to say. As believers, wherever you at in your walk, whether, brother, excuse me, whether you got 
Pure Fix downloaded, then you get up and read your word, you pray, you pray with your wife, whatever. Or you just know you haven't been reading long enough, you don't give the Lord enough time. We have to make sure that we take the, the extra initiative to get closer to God. All of us, some of us have wives, some of us have children. Everybody has somebody in their life, right? And I can guarantee you that you spend time with them. I, I, I guarantee you. The people that you care about, you spend time with. If you marry, there's no way you're going to have a successful marriage if you don't spend time with your, with your spouse. If you got children, there's no way you're going to be a good parent if you don't spend time with them. The same way we have to spend time with the Lord. Not know, well, I'm going to go, it's Sunday, let me go to church. It's Easter, it's Christmas, let me go to church. It's, bro, every day. The Netflix can't be more important than Jesus. Come on, man. It can't be more important than God. What, whatever we do, it can't be more important than God. So we always got to review. Man, am I spending time with him? I say, I love him. Am I Jesus said, if you love me, you follow my command. So, and, 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 and I'm going to say this too. And what, because what happens is, that's how other cultures start getting exalted. The culture of, I can dog my wife out and treat her how, however, but I say I'm a believer. How, how that happen? Then another thing is we have to know what we're dealing with as people that know what we call to do, go out and reach people. Medicine people. We, we got to know what we're dealing with. <laughs> so you, you walk up to somebody that, that uh, hey, you got to know what you're dealing with. But remember, Jesus said the heal don't need a physician. And the Lord was always moved with compassion. The Bible says the harvest is plentiful. But the labors are few. Therefore, pray that the Lord in the harvest will send laborers into the harvest to get his harvest. So it's a harvest out there. And, and listen, people always want to act like nobody want to hear about Jesus, but that's a lie. That's a lie from the pits of hell. People want to hear about Jesus, but they want to hear about the real Jesus. They want to see an authentic, genuine, they want to see the real. If you come with them with the real deal, they'll listen to you. Now listen to you. People just don't like people that's phony and all they captain and they sick of it. <laughs> they're sick of it. I remember even when I was doing time, I never had any problems. Honestly. It was people that would be ready to fight for me. Because they knew how I cared myself. People could tell I could, could tell I was genuine and I cared about people. That's why I'm, I'm talking to you about the Lord and I'm, and I'm doing this and I'm doing it. But the brothers they seen that was yeah. acting like they was better than people and all that shit. Them folks were getting jumped on, stuff stole like they lost them. People do not like disingenuousness. When somebody really knows that you care, they will listen to you. So, I want, I always, you know, I definitely try to always give an opportunity for anything that I, uh, that I minister about, um, give an opportunity, open up the altar for prayer. If anybody here, if, 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 if you feel like you know you've been exalting things in your life that are not of God, or you feel like you've got strongholds or whatever and you need prayer, definitely come forward. You know, if anybody wants to go deep with Jesus or wants to know him, definitely come forward. So we just gonna take this time uh, to pray. Uh, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna pray us out anyway, and then you guys uh, we can we can just pray, you know, however the spirit will. But I think y'all
y'all for coming out today. God is good. God is good. Praise God. Let's let's turn up y'all. Hey, this is Pastor Ray with Church in the Street. We're making disciples is our mission. Hope you were encouraged from our video today, and please don't forget to like and subscribe or leave a comment.